Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at some graphs, as in this type of thing in the uh, wiring regulations. That one happens to be for some fuses, but the principles are going to be the same for all of them. And uh, so that's for fuses, but uh, before that we're just going to have a look at what the difference is between a linear graph and a logarithmic graph, or a log graph as it's more commonly known. And uh, in the case of the wiring regulations, and in fact pretty much anything else that relates to stuff in the real world, it's more often the case that you'll find it's a log graph rather than a linear one. So let's have a quick look at what the differences are to start with. Now let's have a look at this graph here. This is not an electrical item, but it's a graph which we'll do for demonstration purposes. This is actually the price of Bitcoin from uh, April 2013 up to December 2018. And this is a linear graph because if you have a look along the bottom there with the dates, so each uh, division there is essentially the same amount of time. It's actually a six-month period, so we go May 13, November 13, and May 14, November, and so on all the way along. So each division there is the same six-month period. And then if you look on the vertical scale, again, this is a linear graph because each line represents the same amount. So starting at zero, then we've got 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, and $20,000 at the top. So each line is $5,000. And we can see that the uh, price there was pretty much, according to this, the same for a very long time, a number of years. There was a massive spike about 12 months ago, and then it's basically diminished away since then. Now from this, it might give the impression that uh, from basically 2013 all the way through to 2017, pretty much nothing happened, as that line there is pretty much flat all the way through. But of course, this is not true at all. It just happens to appear that way because of this linear scale that we are using. However, if we change this graph to a log scale, we can see that uh, there is actually quite a lot of detail contained inside there. Now, this is the exact same information, but we can now see that uh, from the period of May 13 all the way through to May 17, there was actually a moderate amount of variation in the price there. And uh, rather than being a flat line, we can see a lot more detail in it. And the reason for this is that the scale on the right, where the uh, price is, instead of each line representing the same amount, now we have it so that each line represents 10 times the previous value. So we're starting at zero at the bottom. First line is $10. The next line then is $100. And then we go to $1,000. And then we have $10,000. And of course, the uh, top line would in fact be 100000 if that actually existed. So essentially what's happened here is that the bottom part has been expanded considerably, which is why we're now seeing all that more detail in the line up to about May 2017. And the top part of the graph now is considerably condensed, and we're not seeing that huge spike anymore. The spike's still there, but it's uh, much uh, shorter and smaller. And this is because at the top of the graph, each line represents a much greater amount. And this is a log graph, and these are commonly used for all kinds of purposes, and particularly electrical things, as we'll see later on. So the key here is that each line here is not the same. So from the bottom up to the $10 line, we're actually adding $10. But from the $10 line up to the $100, we are actually adding $90. And then from the next line up, we're adding $900. And then we're actually adding $9,000. And then right from the $10,000 up to the top, we would actually be adding $90,000. So as you get near the top, the actual amount that's covered in that range is significantly increased. Now here's another example of Neon coin. And we can see there that uh, the line from around July 2014 all the way through to July 2017 looks to be pretty much flat. So as if nothing really happened there. And then as with the Bitcoin, there's a big spike uh, around sort of January, February 2018. And then it tails off again, which is uh, fairly typical for most of these coins. And again, this is linear scale because at the bottom, we've basically got the same interval of time each interval there. Again, it's the uh, six months we saw before. And on the side, though the values are much smaller here, they are all linear. So we're going from 0, then we're going to the 4, 8, 12, and 16. So each line here represents a value of 4. But if we change this to the log graph, as we did with the Bitcoin, now we can see that what was in fact a flat line has in fact got a lot of detail going on in there. So uh, from, again, about July 14 through to July 17, there's actually quite a lot of change in the price there. And again, on the right-hand side, we can see it's now a log scale. So you can see it's uh, all the zeros and then a 1, and then it's 10, 100, 1,000, and then 10,000. And the only difference here is these values are considerably smaller. As the top line is actually only one cent, but uh, the principle is the same. Each line is ten times the previous one, rather than just adding on a fixed value of, say, a four, as we had previously. 
So log graphs are quite useful in some ways to cover a much greater range within a condensed format and that tends to show up a lot more detail, particularly if you've got uh, values which are always similar in the lower area there. And it also smooths out the gigantic peaks. So again there's quite a peak there around sort of January, February 2018. But again it's not as massive and severe as we saw on the linear graph previously. Now for an actual uh, graph here we've got this one which is uh, semi-enclosed fuses to BS3036 and these are the rewirable style typically found in the older sort of Wilex consumer units and that sort of thing but principles say the same for all of them and uh, what we've basically got here is a uh, graph here showing time in seconds on the side here and then the current along the bottom and then we've got the uh, four lines drawn on here which represent the different values of fuses you can get so we've got 5, 15, 30 and 60 amps there on the various lines and the purpose of this is to identify what uh, current will actually cause the fuse to disconnect within a certain time. Also here we've got a little chart here this is exactly the same as what's on the graph it's just that they've picked out some common values and certain values of fuses so that uh, for the more common choices you can just simply have a look here rather than finding the relevant point on the graph but uh, this is basically just the same as that just a more convenient way of doing it. Now as we saw with those previous examples this is a log graph and the point of that is that each of these squares does not equal the same thing so as we get further along this way the uh, value represented by one square increases significantly so starting with the current here we're starting at one so that's going to be one amp and then on this first section here we go from one up to ten so in this section here each square such as this one here represents one amp so it's going to be one two three four five six seven eight nine and then ten i notice that the squares themselves are actually various different widths as well so if we're going to have half an amp it will be halfway between this square here and again if it was halfway in this square again that would be again half of a value but again it's a smaller distance there so it does mean that the values are sort of more condensed upwards towards that end but for this first section each square represents one however once we get to the ten here then each square from this point onwards does not represent one it actually represents ten so from this point on it's going to be ten twenty thirty forty and so on all the way up to one hundred and then the same thing repeats again so from this point onwards each square is now 100, so it's 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on. And then from this point, it's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on as well. So each section here is basically 10 times greater than the previous one. Pretty much the same deal as you saw on that graph previously with the coin prices. Now, for this particular graph, it's actually a log graph in both directions. So as well as the current, the same applies for the time as well. And we can see here the values start at 0.01. Then it's 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. So as with the uh, bottom here, each of these marks is 10 times greater than the previous one. And this also means that these squares here are not all the same value. So if we go from the one point here, so this is 1, and then the next one along is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, all the way up to 10. So these represent a value of 1. But once we get to 10, these squares now represent 10 each, so it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. And the same all the way up to the top, so once we get to the 1,000 line, this line here is 1,000, the next line is 2,000, then 3,000, 4,000, so on, up to the 10,000 value. So the important thing with these is not just to see how many squares long it is, but also identify the value for each of the various lines. And that's, of course, based on the major mark here. So if we're in this area, then these will be worth say 100 each and of course if we're up here somewhere then each one of these is going to be worth multiples of 10. Now as I said earlier these uh, values here are just selected values from the various lines we've got in here so if you have a look here say the 30 amp line this will be for a 30 amp rewirable fuse and we can see here that uh, the line actually crosses pretty much on the uh, intersection of two lines here so have a look what those values are if we come down to the bottom here from the line just up there so we're into the hundreds range, so we know that each one of these is 100, so it's going to be 100, 200, 300, so 300 amps. And then if we go across from this line here, we can see they're actually in the range of 0.1. So this is 0.1 seconds, and then this will be 0.2 seconds. So we would expect that for a 30 amp fuse, a current of 300 amps will cause it to disconnect in 0.2 seconds.
And if you look up here, 30 amps there, 300 amps for 0.2 seconds. So again, that's just the same value that we've got there. However, if we went for the 15 amp line here, we can see here there's a reasonably good intersection there. So if we come down on that line to the bottom, this is only in the tens range, so these are multiples of 10, so it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So that's going to be 90 amps at this point. And then the value over here is going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So if you have a look in the graph here, 0 0.4 seconds, 15 amp fuse, and I get that 90 amp value that we had there. And you can do that for any point on the graph anywhere you want. So it's just these are more convenient ones that have been called out because they're fairly common values you'll be looking up, particularly 0.4 in the middle there. So that's log graphs. And the key point is to realise that within each section, say between 10 and the 100, each square is the same value, so it's 10 in that particular case. But once you get to 100 or the next uh, order of magnitude, then the squares are no longer 10 each, they're actually 100 each. And that particular section, say, is 10 times or order of magnitude greater than the previous one. And that repeats throughout, so once you get, say, to the 1000 range, you've got squares equaling 1000. And then from the point on, you get, say, to 10,000, then they're 10,000 each, and so on. And the whole point of this is to get a lot more information into a small space. And in the case of the graph there, we saw it goes from 1 amp at the bottom all the way up to 10,000 amps on the right-hand side of the page. And of course, if you drew that out using a linear graph, you'd have to have an individual square, say, representing 1 amp, and then you'd need, obviously, 10,000 squares. And even if you do that out with the squares being 1 millimetre wide, you would, of course, need 10,000 millimetres, and that would actually represent a graph over 10 metres across. Clearly, that's impractical to use. It would be uh, bigger than most people's rooms. So, obviously, uh, it's much easier to draw it in a way that the uh, scale is condensed as you get towards the end, so larger and larger values. And therefore, we can fit a lot more stuff in a single space. And so it's very common for graphs to be like that, uh, as most sort of real-world type values do actually work in that sort of arrangement. So you're covering a very wide range of values, but in reality you're only interested in a, a certain amount of those, so condensing it down into a small space doesn't actually matter. So let's look at linear and log graphs, and say most of them are log in the case of electrical things and most others. But I say they're quite straightforward. Just remember that the squares are not all the same. It obviously depends on the exact point you are within the graph. But say when you're within that point, they are at least consistent within that particular range. So that's all for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.